45 year old female known case of hypertension for the past 5 years she is compliant to medication she is okay not i'm not going to hear your description but i would like to know what is the diagnosis as a uncivil angina why the works are because the patient presented with us with difficult cardiac pain which mm -hmm. is also on rest and the troponins are negative what's the duration so the duration is the patient is having the symptom for the past two days and it is being aggravated for last night so that's why we are planning so two days of yes such as this okay so what else you will look for i'm yeah. agreeing buying your reasoning that since she is having resting chest pain right from the beginning yes sir and it's you think it's typical yes sir why you are saying it's typical so it's typical because it is basically retro sternal in origin and the patient is uh, saying that it is uh, crushing in nature mm -hmm. and so the patient also saying that it is radiating towards the left shoulder and it is also uh, radiating towards the neck the patient is also having difficulty in breathing when the patient is having that pain and uh, it is not always the pain that the patient is in pain but uh, when the patient is lying flat uh, the pain is there and when the patient is sitting also the pain is there and it is radiating towards the back and the neck and the patient is having difficulty in breathing as well what's the duration the duration the patient is having this pain for more than 30 minutes okay but how it relieves so it is relieving by when the patient takes medication especially a sublingual antacid and it mm -hmm. also relieves when the patient is lying and doing nothing But, and she and had no background of ischemic sir, heart disease. Uh, she had. So she is no case of ischemic heart disease. And STEMI was done. And STEMI was uh, done in February twenty three, and then again in October now. Okay. At that time, the troponin was leaked was about one thousand, and Whoa. no intervention was done at that time. The patient was compliant to medication at that time. What are her risk factors? So the risk factors only hypertension, and the patient is slightly obese. Okay. And what are the ECG changes? So the ECG there are. some changes there is welling sign in ecg there is t wave inversion in b2 to b5 mm -hmm. so now considering the background and present symptoms uh, we are further consolidating our diagnosis that this is unstable angina in the way you describe the symptoms now how how will you plan management so i will plan the management that i will consider the patient for inpatient invasive So because the patient is symptomatic, and I want to relieve the patient's uh, pain because uh, she is young, she is forty-five years age. It is a middle age, sir. So that's okay. Right. So that is your plan, definitive plan yes, in sir. terms of invasive strategy. But what medications you will offer to her? Uh, sir, now in have, between, like. Sir, now I have kept her on SR plus sir, because it is all ten key ischemic medications. Sir, like SR plus, Corvus. What what will be your targets? What will be my target in which? In terms says, of hemodynamics and other, you have to achieve. Uh, as the patient is hemodynamically stable now, so I am giving S card plus so that uh, there will be no further. That is problem. dual antiplatelet. Exactly, sir. Dual antiplatelet. What else? Beta blocker to reduce the heart rate, so there will be no ischemic uh, changes. Cardi, sir, for antihypertensive and the statin because to oh, for what? Uh, what is her baseline heart rate and the blood pressure? Heart rate is seventy two, seventy five. And pressure? Pressure is one hundred twenty by eighty and one hundred ten by seventy. So why are you are giving cardi? Yes. So cardi five minutes. In April, because she is having ongoing ischemia. Yes, sir. And you're starting beta blocker. Yes, sir. That's going to reduce the, the pressure rate. as well, yes. along with heart rate. You will left with very low pressures. ACE inhibitors have no role in acute ischemia. So giving ACE inhibitor at the moment, you are decreasing your really bank of pressure. Okay. So you won't be able to add on. Let's see. After beta blockers, heart rate sixty to seventy. She's still having pain. What else you will give? Sir, nitroglycerin. So how will you give if your cardiac have dropped the pressure to ninety? Okay, sir. So just wait how your beta blocker behave and uh, really affects the pressure. And if ongoing pains, IV nitrate, according to pressure and symptoms. What else? So Statin. Statin, sir. What else? Yes, sir, I am also giving her suspect so because the patient is in pain. That's why it is a very. Mildly IV nitrate. No, 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 sir. Orally. Mildly should be IV nitrate. If someone is having resting pain, at least twelve to twenty-four hour no resting pain, then you can switch to oral nitrate. What else? One more thing you are not giving. Sir, flexing. That's an oxa parent. Usually don't you say names of. Uh, okay, like brand mark of, brand name uh, so an example so, what's the dose of an so 60 mg of pitinib okay let's you are taking her to the cath lab mm. so how will you adjust that 
and ounces of heroin. It's not uh, your level. Who's who has done the cat? Zuhair. Let's see, she's on an oxaparin. You're taking to the cath lab. So what you will do? We'll see when was the last dose of an oxaparin. Yes, that's very important. If someone is on an oxaparin, what's the last dose he received? And how many dosages she already have received? Let's see, someone has already two dosages and last dose is within? You don't have to give any additional uh, uh, anticoagulant. So that would be enough. So it's very important to gauge timing and dosages. That's why I prefer to give fundoperinox. Because in that situation, you don't have to gauge. You have to give additional. And most of the time, our cath lab people give additional heparin unfractionated in spite. Because nobody knows when the last dose was given and how many doses the patient has received. So in patient, if available, fundoperinox would be appropriate as compared to an oxapin, especially for those patients who are waiting for invasive strategy. Okay? Good.